the Khulafa are discussed in this way or they left it alone. And if you say this, that they left it alone, man, then we should shut up concerning it. We should close up if they haven't spoken about it because, Yanni, like he said, if it suffice them, it should definitely suffice us after them. This then <clears throat> bespeaks of that methodology that if we want to come together, we need to be on the same page concerning. We can't think about brotherhood unless we're thinking about coming together on the same page. You're not thinking about being correct unless you're thinking about following the methodology laid down by Allah and expounded upon by the Prophet ﷺ. You can never think about being successful in this deen unless we're willing to follow that methodology that comes down from above the seven heavens. Otherwise, coming together for what? On the basis of what? This one over here is a Sufi. This one over here is this one. This one over here is that. And we're coming together? Are we going to disregard all of those differences in the name of what? What happens to the verses? كُنْتُمْ خَيْرَ أُمَّةٍ أُخْرِجَتْ لِلنَّاسِ تَأْمَرُونَ بِالْمَعْرُوفُ وَتَنْهَوْنَ عَنَ الْمُنْكَرِ وَتُؤْمِنُونَ بِاللَّهِ what happened to the verses where Allah says, you are the best razor for mankind. You command what is right and you forbid what is wrong. And one of the gravest evils that we have are the deviances that we are experiencing in terms of our aqidah. Everybody, everybody coming up with his own methodology, his own way of understanding and everybody wants you to keep quiet like it's all right. Like the Prophet ﷺ never prophesied about these things to come. Like it was not laid out how we're to receive guidance in this day and time. So we need brothers and sisters then when we speak about coming together. It has to be on this common ground. The foundation has to be the same. The foundation has to be based on what has been legislated in the text. So that when we conclude, the conclusion is correct. So, if you want to have some brotherly gatherings, and we want to bring the community, let's come on man, let's come together on the Qur'an and the Sunnah based on the understanding of the Salaf. Not based on the understanding of Abdul Hassan and Ashari. Not based on the understanding of the Mu'tazil or the Jamiya. Not based on the ascending of Jama'a Tabliq or some of the other groups. It's come together based on the Qur'an and the Sunnah, based on the understanding of the Salaf. So that we could be right. Now, <clears throat> bear with me for five minutes. I'm deviating a bit because I'm over five, maybe ten minutes. But I want you to just a little history, real brief. Abu al-Hasan al-Ashari, Ali Ismail, Ali ibn Ismail al-Ashari. This particular movement is very popular in this day and time. Um, <clears throat> or those who follow him. He went through a number of stages. First, yani being a Mu'tazila and Ali Ali al-Jubai. <clears throat> Okay, who was actually the leader of the Mu'tazila during his time. And later he went away from him and after 15 days of just being alone in his, his home, he came out <clears throat> with a new methodology. And the methodology was that you yani, actually explain away the text according to what is suitable and coextensive which goes along with the intellect. And that you, this was yani, the same methodology that Abdullah ibn Sa'id ibn Kullab, they call him the Kullabiya, had. All right? And that is you affirm seven qualities. Seven qualities of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this based on the intellect. That is Allah's haya, his life, al-ilm, his knowledge, irada, his will, Qudr, his ability, as sama hearing, wal-basr, 
Sa'id wal kalam and speech. This this particular level is where the Ashaira are in this day and time. Amongst the Mutasawifa, amongst them, all right, <clears throat> they have a, they have a, a, a separate approach in terms of how they acquire things, all right. And uh, for example, we have them saying about Al Kashf. How many of you brothers been Sufis before? Feel ashamed but raise your hand. <laughs> anyway, <clears throat> what it means is that there are times when certain like Ghazali and Al, uh, al Jami, fi mustar al talaqi, yani the basis of acquiring certain things, taqdeem al kashfi wa thawq. What that is, yani, if you get some inspiration either in a dream or some vision, that you take this and you pour, you prefer it above the text. And this is like what some of them says, حَدَّثِنِي قَلْبِ عَنْ Rabbi, That my Lord narrated to me from my Lord. Right? حَدَّثَنِي قَلْبِ عَنْ Rabbi. My heart narrated to me from my Lord. Hey, I said it differently. Hey, Barakallahu Fikum. And they call this, yani, that... Uh, knowledge that comes from the close one, right? Amongst the other things that they have in their creed, min akhassifat al-qadim, they describe Allah as qadim, yani old or ancient, right? <clears throat> Is that there are certain things what they call hulul hawadith, yani things that happen. They see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as a given. And what this means is that <clears throat> there are certain things you deny. Rida, Allah being pleased. Al Ghadab, Allah getting angry like comes in the hadith. Or Al Istiwa, Allah being above his throne. Right? And they deny it because they have a certain philosophy of how they view Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The denial here comes, like I said, in terms of taharif or twisting and distorting the text and giving it an explanation that was not found with the early generation. Okay? In respect of speech, <clears throat> let, let, me, let me just read something that al Baqillani says concerning Allah's speech. He says, يَجِبَ أَنْ يُعْلَمْ أَنَّ اللَّهَ تَعَلَى لَا يَتَّسِفُ كَلَامُ الْقَدِيمِ بِالْحُرُوفِ وَلَا أَسْوَاتِ that you need to know that Allah's speech, because they really say that what you have is the Qur'an is not Allah's speech. It is an expression from Allah's speech, like an interpretation. Right? And what you have, Allah's speech, really, you cannot have any letters or any sound. shame in sifat al or anything like these descriptions that you say that belong to the creation. Now I'm just more I'm just for you to think a moment of why it is important for us man to go back to the methodology that Allah has laid out. Because in your creed you begin to have an understanding, a view of your creator that was not there during the time of the Prophet. Your whole foundation becomes twisted and distorted when you go off the man the manhaj. Twisted. Okay? We know what the Prophet said. We know about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran. Inna anzalnahu Quranan Arabiya. La'allakum ta'aqilun. Okay? Now, la'allakum tafhamun. You may understand. We send it in Arabic Quran so that you may understand. You can't understand something that has no letters and no sound, man. Now, no letters, you can't read it. No sound. Someone say, man, look, I understand not writing over there, but you can't see it. Right? There ain't any letters. Right? I'm sure you know you have a whole lot of people to convince that you keep you insane. You ain't, you ain't, you ain't, you ain't insane. Right? You lost your mind. But this is their methodology, but we have some ahadith that go against them. Imam Ahmed, <clears throat> I'm not going to mention the ahadith because my time is up. Imam Ahmad was asked by his son, he said, Sa'altu Abi, ask my father, Rahimullah, in Qawmin, about people they say, Kalamullah, 
لما كلم الله موسى لم يتكلم بصوت that when Allah spoke to Musa there was no sound no, 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 no voice was heard Imam Ahmed says Bala. he said sure إن ربك عز وجل تكلم بصوت he says yes your Lord spoke and there was a sound هذا الحديث here comes the principle these ahadith نرويها كما جاءت these textual evidence that we have, we accept them as they are. The same way that Awza'i said it, the same way Sufyan ibn Uyayna and Sufyan al Thawri, the same way Layth ibn Sa'ad ibn Malik, all of the a'imma from the tabi'in and the ba'i tabi'in, on the same page, no different. That's what we, be, we want to be upon if we're going to come together. Barakallahu feekum, subhanakallahu wa bihamdik, shadu an lahayna, and to stay for the court.